Welcome, welcome everybody to Dead of the Brain! How's everybody doing? Hope you're not brain dead by now with this uh, very interesting text adventure game. We are here talking to Ray in the room with the survivors. When last we left off, we met Kathy and had a romantic encounter. And now Ray is telling us about uh, some groups we have to watch out for. You know, those, those kind of rogue groups that form during a zombie apocalypse and, you know, usually have to fight them and the zombies. And apparently uh, Shira, our lovely lady, is out shopping across the street. So I guess Ray and Cole are talking in that scene, and uh, now we are controlling Kane for some reason. And you know, I'm just looking at the building here and he's describing it, especially the trash can, because I've always got to look at those, not sure what they are. But apparently we're using Kane here for the moment, who uh, was that reporter like character uh, who said that uh, one month ago there was the outbreak in his hometown but none of the characters here heard about it and hey there's a weapon finally something we can use I'm probably gonna have to look at everything a hundred times and after Kane has decided he's done looking at everything Maybe we can finally pick it up. We gotta make sure to look. Look real hard. I can't can't use any of the other commands. So just have to keep on looking. So if you stare enough, eventually you can do something. Okay, so I looked around this room about 10 times. I finally got the get option. And Kane, one, two, three. And he's practicing shooting his, this machine gun with all 23 shots we have. Uh-oh, and we have someone in distress. Of course, so there's our lovely Shira, and... Yep, what most uh, wild people do during a zombie apocalypse. So now I'm going to have to waste my bullets on actual humans. Then I won't have any for the zombies later. So this gang is calling themselves Bloody Fox. So they must be uh, wannabe friends of Solid Snake. And they just made up a generic name for themselves. Urgh, yeah. Fear those pixels in your head. So of course, after wasting about 10 shots on one of them, the other one begs for his life. I love it. Saying, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll be good from now on. I'll be a nice guy and not hurt anybody. Shira wants us to show him some mercy. Of course. We're gonna have to take care of him too. So that must mean I only have like, what, 
three shots left. So uh, we're, we're using Kane right now. And uh, Shira heard about him from Cole. So they're going to introduce themselves here. Talk about Bloody Fox a bit. She's going to head back to the hotel. And she uh, mentions that uh, he wants to meet Cole at 10 o'clock in the uh, parking lot of the hotel. So I guess they're going to, you know, collaborate, corroborate their findings. I'm not sure how to pronounce that word. So here we have Shira, and we're back to Cole, it looks like. So that's a good thing. So let's have a look. Gotta make sure we look at everything. I'm surprised her outfit isn't all torn up from those guys in the previous scene. Okay, so she mentions, you know, Kane wanted to meet him, but we have some time and we got that key. So we're gonna go to Doc's house and see uh, see if we can find something. Uh-oh. Kosui no nioi. So Shira can smell the uh, perfume on us from Kathy. Barechatta. Better watch out. Those ladies can smell perfume of other ladies, apparently. So she wants to go with us to Doc's house. So we'll go ahead and take her. I'm guessing the other option, even if we refuse, she'll still go with us anyway. It's one of those games where you have the illusion of choice. So once again, we're here at Doc's house. Hopefully that kitty, whose name is Kitty, is gone from here. And we don't have to worry about Zombie Cat attacking us again. I don't know why the move option is so popular in this. Like, I don't even think I've used the use option yet at all. It's like the move option. Isn't move the same as go? So let's go ahead and look around. Another one of the typical hallways in this game. You know, you've got just lots and lots of hallways all looking the same with different colors and here's Doc's uh, private room got quite a few books and things an old clock looks kind of interesting Almost some of these places, if there's like a little hidden item that you have to, you know, particularly look at, or you have to look at things several times in order to trigger new dialogue. There's a there's a lot of games like this, you know. When I look at old retro gaming, there's a lot of you know this kind of story-driven style game. This this style was probably quite popular back in the 80s, 90s. You know, these text adventure games. I don't think there were very many zombie ones, though. I think this one kind of came out at the time 
um, you know, biohazard sort of thing was getting popular and the zombie, you know, niche, niche, niche. So here's the doc's office and, you know, I'm not, there's a clock. I'm not going to translate everything. It's just whenever I look at something, it just sort of describes it in Japanese and that's basically all it's doing. But I'm hoping to trigger something here. Just lots and lots of books. Although Shira commented that that painting is a pretty one compared to the ones in the hall which were just creepy old men, scientist, Rembrandt looking people. Can't grab anything yet. Can't use anything. Looking out the window doesn't do anything. Looks like there's something here on the table. A remote control is on the table. I wonder if I can use that. Well, I guess we're going to go back to the hallway here. I'm not sure if I can go down the hallway, around the corner there. Kind of like in the first episode. Nope. So there's really only two places to go here. So we'll just have to keep looking at every single pixel until I find some secret object. I may, uh, you know, do some cuts if it if it takes me a while. That way, you don't have to watch me searching for everything over and over again. But let's uh, go ahead and have one more quick look at uh, the other room here. Look at the creepy paintings first. Like a lot of times, you know, if you search one place and then go to another, it, it changes the dialogue. Still can't do anything but go. I mean, go with an exclamation mark. Two exclamation marks. Oh, hey. So yeah, I just have to look at the remote control here. So uh, this remote control has two buttons on it. So it's kind of strange. You've got uh, a power button and a open button. Let's see, why can't I use this? It's like the move command. It's so weird. Well, let's be moved by moving our fingers on this thing, I guess. So I'll push the other button too. Is there are two buttons here to click. There we go. Ooh. I hear the Zelda discovery sound effect in my head. There's a safe behind the picture with another code. Great. I don't think I've gotten a new code number yet. So, I guess we can try entering something here, huh? <laughs> With the move command, of course. I'm gonna move the keypads. Let's try the 216 code from before. 
Nope, that doesn't do anything. Apparently there's four numbers for this one instead of three. Okay, I'm gonna have to go look around here for a bit. Okay, so I've been going around for a while and I finally uh, looked under the bed here in his room and uh, you can see there's a picture of Doc and apparently his wife that's uh, under the bed. So let's uh, look at this picture over and over again. It's got to be something with this picture, right? It's just a little too suspicious. Happy birthday, Mary, 20 October. All right, well, there's our number, I guess. 20 October. So, uh, it's kind of typical in Japan, the you know, the date is usually backwards uh, from the way Americans think of a date. But, um, so October 20, so let's try uh, maybe 2010, as October is the 10th month. So let me move these numbers. Let's try uh, 2010 first. See if that works. Nope. Right, this is America, so let's do it the American way. Apparently this game takes place in America. Because there's no zombies in Japan, right? It's a land of peaceful people and geisha. Unfortunately, I haven't seen the zombie cat yet, so that code worked. We got a book to look at and some an envelope. Okay, so after looking at this book and envelope for almost 20 minutes, over and over again, there was a bunch of dialogue. Uh, finally, a photo shows up, and it's a photo of you know the doc at some kind of conference you know, one month ago, and uh, Kiel is in the photo, and he's dressed as a scientist too. He is that uh, cop, I think, that left the note for everybody to go to the hotel at the um, at the police station. So, so we're gonna go and talk to Kane here about what we found so far in this mystery. And uh, Sheeta's gonna go ahead and head back to the hotel room. And we're gonna have a chat with Kane here. So this one month prior thing seems to be pretty important. The, the zombie outbreak that was sort of covered up one month previously that happened to Kane and he's a survivor you really think that it would be on the news you know unless it was some kind of raccoon city cover-up so Cole is mentioning they found information on Keel and that he could be our bad guy maybe he stole the serum because he heard about it from the professor one month ago at that meeting since he was a member of that group. Kruga. Mentioning Kruga and Kiel as well, because Kruga is the, uh, the police officer, I think. Does that recall? Hasn't been a whole lot of, you know, 
details about the, uh... Yeah, so Keel is still alive. Kane thinks that he'd probably be dead by now, but apparently not. So we're gonna go find this Keel and have it out. Of course, and nobody's here in the meeting room anymore. All the survivors are gone somewhere. Let's go to our room. And uh, Shira's gone also. Oh, there's a ghoul, I guess is his name, not cougar. Ghoul? Yeah, he looks like a ghoul, his face. I can see him being a zombie pretty soon. His face is already zombie-like. But I guess there's a bunch of zombies in the lobby now. And so everybody's retreated to the hospital. And so this guy wants me and uh, Kane to go down to the first floor and clear out the zombies because, yeah, the cops in this game are too weak. And they can't do anything, so it's got to be all of us. Whoa. So yeah, we've got a rather large number here and a time limit. It's not working. This is supposed to be representative of infinite zombies coming at me, apparently. Whoa, and now we've got explosions going on in the building. So we'd better run. So we're gonna head up the stairs, running away from the zombie horde. There, uh, Cole's worried that you know Shira's still in the building. So, running up to, you know, see if she's still around or if she's still okay. But it looks like the uh, staircase ends. Yep, this building was un under construction and not finished. And there's the river nearby, this hotel, if you remember the map. Needle River. So we're gonna have to jump in the river and get out of here. Wow, I don't know why there are bombs going off. Apparently somebody planted a bomb in the hotel. So now our heroes are in the thick of it. We just jumped out of the building. Into the river there, you can see on the map. And let's uh, head to this hospital where apparently all the survivors have retreated to. Oh hey, a helicopter! You know when a helicopter shows up in a zombie apocalypse, we're all saved! Because it can't be a zombie piloting it, right? So our heroes are waving at the helicopter, trying to get its attention, and... Now it's shooting at us. Lovely. So even the humans are our enemies now. I love their cartoony expressions there. Run away! Run away! So it's probably Kiel that uh, is piloting the helicopter since he's the bad guy and apparently we've uh, learned too much or maybe the bad guys think we've learned too much so they're trying to take us out now 
But I don't think I've learned enough yet. So we escaped the helicopter, it looks like, and now we can finally go to the uh, hospital. Hopefully looking for the rest of the survivors. And yeah, hospital is the second worst place to go in a zombie outbreak since that's where all the sick people go that are infected and they infect everybody else. And that building does not look very sturdy. But we're going to go inside anyway. Oh, lovely. More things to look at. So it looks like the staircase has a bunch of rubble on it. So we can't go up to the second floor. Hey, there's a Jido Hambaiki. I wonder if I can get a drink out of it. That's your useless Japanese for today. Vending machine. Jido Hambaiki. Kind of an interesting word, actually. Let's see if we can move this rubble out of the way. I still haven't used the use option. Can we go upstairs? Climb over this? Apparently not. Elevator's broken. There's a door over here. I guess let's go in here. Oh, lovely. So, two of the survivors, it looks like. Let's look at the paper that's conveniently in the way. Covering her up. Any of these papers say anything? Can we take the guns? Probably not. Can never take the guns. So that's Sally, uh, one of the girls that was a survivor, and that's uh, Ray and his rear end. So I didn't expect the punk guy to get killed. I thought that he would make trouble for us. Look around here a bit more. There's got to be something in this room. So apparently all the uh, survivors ran here and now we're two less survivors. But it looks like they definitely weren't uh, killed by zombies because their wounds are quite a bit different. So something else is going on. Probably Keel, our villain. Our two heroes are suspecting that it's all Keel, apparently. Well, that's too bad. I thought Sally, uh, Sally was kind of a cool character. Didn't have any love for Ray, though. But just because of the way he stared at me, all creepy like. So, yeah, we're in quite a predicament here. Looking for our lovely lady. And uh, apparently, our villain, Keel. So I think uh, maybe I'll go ahead and pause here. And um, when I figure out exactly what to do next or where to go, we'll start right up there in the next video. So I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed more of this zombie game. And we'll see you in the next one as I think we approach the conclusion of this game. Don't think it's too long. So hopefully you'll join me then. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you in the next one. Johnny.